Welcome to a new video about drawing and animation. Today, we will see how to create a South Park style animation using switch layers in Moho. So get ready because with this technique you will be able to create facial expressions, lip sync and more, even on characters with bones. We are going to go step by step analyzing the entire process and I will give you little tips throughout the entire video. Remember to turn on the subtitles if you need them, so get ready and let's get started. Switch layers allow you to do what the name suggests, switch between layers during any kind of animation. It is a very simple technique, which allows us to show one layer at a time. So, let's see how it works step by step. But before starting, for those who are starting to draw in Moho, I am going to leave in the description some links to videos about how to draw and how to add bones. I will also leave some extra links with tips on lip sync and how to import audios to the timeline. Okay, in my case, I already have my character created, but if you want, you can look for the eyes and the mouth poses of the characters online. Here I simply drew a group of 4 eyes and 10 mouth poses to work on today's example. As you can see, I separated each group of my layers by color. We have the eyes, the mouth poses and all the layers with all the body parts. Let's see a quick preview. Here I have the eyes and mouths that I am going to use. You can prepare another character with other images if you wish. The animation process will always be the same. Okay, an important detail before starting is knowing how to center the pivot point. The pivot point is what determines the location of the object manipulator. Aligning, centering or modifying the location of this point could help us when we have to modify the size or rotate our objects. Let's see this case for example. The pivot point of these eyes is right in the center of our scene, and it is not centered on the object itself. If I move the object from here, I will be able to do it, but if I want to modify the size, as you can see, it becomes pretty difficult since my pivot center is far from the object. The same would happen if I want to rotate it. If we have the pivot point out of place, any modification of the objects could become a huge headache. This does not mean that it is wrong. Moving the pivot point is usually very useful depending on the animation we are working on. If we want to center our pivot point with our object, we can do it by selecting the tool set Origin or Letter O and then clicking where we want to place it. In my case, I'm going to choose the center of the eyes. Now, if we select our transformation tool again, or the letter M, the rotation or resizing will be simpler. I wanted to mention all this before we start since today we will be working with several layers. So, just to be sure, let's check the process one more time to practice. Let's choose another object. This one, for example, as you can see it is not centered on the object. So to fix it, just choose the Set Origin tool. Click in the center of our object, and then if you want, with the Transformation tool, you will be able to move or adjust the size as you wish. There are other ways to align objects, which we will see later. But with these two simple tools, we are more than ready to start today's animation. Okay, before we continue, as you can see, I left the eyebrow layers and these two eye lines separate from the rest. We are going to turn off these layers for the moment, since we are going to work with them later. Okay, as a first step, what we are going to do is select all the eyes that we have, and we will place them on his face. Just place them one above another. It doesn't matter if they are overlapping, that is our intention. To make it easier and to see what you are doing, you can turn off each layer after having placed it. With the mouth, we will do exactly the same thing. Just place each one on top of the other. The second step is to merge all the layers into a single folder. To do this, first, select all the eye layers, then press the right click and choose the option group with selection. I'm gonna name this folder, Eyes. Remember that if you want to give color to your layers, just click on this box and then choose the color you want. Okay, now let's do the same with all the mouth poses. Select them and create a new folder. We can also change the color of all its layers. Lastly, we are going to create one more folder to include all the body parts. Okay, 
We now have everything organized in three folders, the eyes, the mouth poses, and the body. You can create all the folders that are necessary depending on your character. Okay, now we are ready. To use the switch layer technique, we will simply select the folder that contains the eyes and select the option convert to switch. As you can see, this folder contains four visible layers at the moment, but look what happens when we select the convert to switch option. One layer is visually highlighted while the others are now hidden. And that tells us that at this moment, the switch layer is on. We can also see that the folder icon has changed. From now on, we can select the layer we want and the rest will always remain hidden. Even if you have the folder closed by right-clicking it, you will be able to select the layer you want without having to open it. This is really useful if you are working with many layers at the same time. Another great option is found in the Windows menu and is called Switch Selection. This small window will give us the opportunity to view and select each layer that we have in a simple and fast way. Okay, let's repeat the process with the folder that contains the mouth poses. Just press right-click on the folder and select the option Convert to Switch. Now we will have a greater number of layers, but as we saw, we can select them by right-clicking on the folder or using the Switch Selection window. With time, you will discover on your own which is the best option to work with. Okay, once we have our three folders, we can quickly select the layers in case it is necessary to correct the position of any of the pieces. A very important point that we must remember are the names of each layer. The mouth poses in my case still don't have a name. Use names that allow you to easily remember what expression you are referring to. We will see in a moment that this will make our work much easier when we are animating. Before continuing, let's look at some examples of how you can prepare your mouth charts. Mouth charts like these are a reference guide that we animators use to match character mouth shapes or phonemes to specific sounds in the dialogue or soundtrack. By mastering its use, you open up endless possibilities for your animations. Your characters become more realistic, your stories more compelling, and your art more impactful. It's really important to work on our facial expressions. All of them are fundamental when we are creating the personality of our character. This will help you as a memory reinforcement to know how our character behaves in certain situations. The Simpsons, for example, have a guide called the No-No Sheets. Basically, it's a style guide that helps the show's artists know exactly what they're not supposed to draw. Simpsons style guides can run for hundreds of pages, most of them established by animator David Silverman. That is why it is very important to have our planning sheets ready before starting to draw in Moho. Okay, let's continue. We now have our switch folder ready, that means we can now start working on the animation. To do this, first, go to frame 1 in the timeline and then select the eyes folder. Now we are going to choose the first option called Eyes Open. As we can see, a new switch layer channel and a new keyframe have been created in our timeline. Now let's move on to frame 5. Here I am going to choose the layer called Happy Eyes. This layer has the eyes closed and we can use it to create a blink. Now let's move on to frame 8 and here I'll select the layer Open Eyes once again. As you can see, we created a simple blink only by creating just two keyframes. Now we can see how useful the Switch Layers tool can be. If we want to modify the time of the action we are animating, you can simply click on the timeline and move the necessary frames. This will allow you to adjust the mouth poses if you are working with a lip sync or any other action that needs a slight adjustment. Let's repeat the process to create another blink. To do this, just go to frame 14 and then select the layer with our eyes closed now let's move forward in our timeline to frame 18 and select our layer with the eyes open. And that's it. As you can see, we have created two blinks very quickly and in a very simple way. But let's see what else we can do with this technique. Let's do a quick lip sync so you can see how it works. First select the mouth layer. The switch layer channel that corresponds to the eyes has been deleted. But don't worry, if you select the eyes layer, you will be able to see the channel again. Okay, now let's go back to the mouth layer. And here it is important to mention that our animation, although it is created on other channels, does not mean that we cannot see it. 
If you move around within the timeline, you can still see the animation we created for the eyes. Knowing this, we are going to go to frame 12, and here we will select one of our mouth poses. In my case, I don't have the exact positions phonetically, but it doesn't matter since we're just going to create an animation as if he were speaking. Okay, now we have Cartman talking and also blinking. In your case, you will adapt each mouth according to the audio you have to create the lip sync. As we saw previously, if we select the eyes layer and move through the timeline, we will see that from here we can also view the animation of the mouth. This will always allow us to have an idea of everything we are creating, and at the same time we will have an organized timeline. Okay, if you made it this far, you might be interested in moving on to a more advanced level. So now, let's add some bones to our character. To do this, we are going to select all the layers except the background. The background is not necessary right now, because usually that is worked on separately, and we will talk about that in another video. So now we are going to select the group with selection option, and then we will call this folder Cartman. Remember to always go to frame zero in the timeline when you are adding folders, bones, or if you want to create any structural changes to our character. We now have all the layers and animations within the same folder. Something important to remember is that if we select the folders that have animations inside, these animations will become visible in the timeline, and that will give us a full perspective of what we are animating. But let's take a look at another important detail that will help us be more organized. Right now, each channel in the timeline has the color that we assign to the layer. But let's look at this in detail. Suppose I want to change the color of the eyes layer. To do this, I just go to the layer, and then I select the color I want. At first, it looks like nothing happened, but if we select the eyes and the mouths layer, we'll see that the color we selected was used to determine the background color on the timeline. Now, if you want to change the color of the animation line in our timeline, we just have to go to the layers in our folder, select all the layers and choose another color. Now, as you can see, the background and the animation line have the same color. If you wish, it is also possible to apply a different color to each section of the animation line. It's very simple. To do it, you just have to select the section you want to change, then press right-click to open the menu, and from the label option you will be able to choose a different color. This will not affect the color of your layers. It is simply a detail to use in the timeline. Okay, let's continue. We can now start working with bones. To do this, first we have to select our main folder, press right-click, and then choose Convert to Bone. Now, as you can see, our main folder icon has changed. This means that from now on we will be able to create, delete, and modify bones. Remember to go to frame zero and always keep the main folder selected to see the bones menu. Now we'll add a single bone to control the entire head. To do this, we will simply make a single click without dragging the mouse. First, we must remove all the strength from the bone with the Bone Strength tool or letter S, then we can give the bone a name and then a color. Finally, activate the Show Label option to see the name on the screen. We now have our first bone ready. If we go to frame 1 to try to move the bone, we will see that nothing happens. That's why from now on we're going to link all the layers of Cartman's head to this bone using the Bind Points tool. For those who watch Stitch's drawing video, you've probably already worked with this tool, but if you haven't, don't worry, we'll work through each step again. The first thing we are going to do is go to the folder that contains all the character parts. Here, as you can see, each part is on a separate layer. In general, you will only need to separate the layers that will be animated later. In a moment, we will analyze and see how we can correct small errors that may happen. In my case, the first thing I am going to link is the head layer. This is very simple. First, we select the Cartman folder to be able to select the bone we want. Then we select the head layer and all its vertices. Once everything is selected, we simply click on the Bind Points tool or letter I to activate this tool. Then click on the top button also called Bind Points to apply the action. And that's all. As you can see now, the head layer is now attached to the bone. 
To check this we can go to frame 1 and move the bone. Okay, now we have the head attached, so let's continue with the wool hat. As we can see, the bone is still selected so we will simply click on the hat layer. In this case we just have to select the vertices. To do this, first we are going to use the select points tool, or letter G, and then select all the vertices. At this moment, I'm using the lasso tool which allows me to do a more practical selection. Once we have everything selected, we click on the Bind Points tool and then on the top button to join everything. We still have the bone selected, so the only thing we have to do now is repeat the process only selecting the yellow part of the wool hat. Let's check again if everything is correct. If you want, you can also check your character from frame 0. From here, you will only need to use the Manipulate Bones or letter Z. Now check this out. In this case, for example, I have the lines of the face and the clothes on the same layer. What you can do if this happens is to select only the lines of the face to link them with our bone. This works, but it's always better to have everything on separate layers. The next step we are going to do is to link the eyes. Don't worry, the process is always the same, and this will not affect the animation we already have created. So just simply select the bone, then the internal layers of the Open Eyes folder, and join everything with the Bind Points tool. Once we check that everything is correct, we can join the last thing we are missing, which are the mouths. Remember that if you want to select all the vectors of a layer, you can do it with the Selection tool, or you can also use Control a for a faster selection. An important question that I am often asked is if it is possible to modify a drawing which is already animated, and the answer is yes, of course. Let's see how we can modify Cartman's t-shirt to avoid empty spaces when we move his head. Just remember that these modifications are always made from frame zero. In my case, I'm going to go to the t-shirt layer and simply move some vectors. From now on, we will be able to move the head without any problem. Okay, so far, we have the eyes and mouth animation all done. Now let's animate the head. To do this, we're going to select Cartman's folder, and from here we're going to work only with the head bone. So, let's go to frame 1 in our timeline, and then click our bone to generate a keyframe. Now just go to frame 12 and click on the bone again without moving it. In frame 18 we could generate a small rotation and lower our head a little. But take a look. Not all mouths nor all eyes are linked to the bone, and this is where I wanted to get. While I continue repeating the process to join all the remaining eyes and mouths with the bind points tool, I'm going to take a moment to tell you something. When we are working on an animation, we usually want to modify, add, delete, and link all kind of stuff. This will always happen. There's no way to avoid it. We can reduce errors, but there will always be modifications. Boho is just a tool. The creativity comes from you. What I show you through my videos is what my teachers taught me. Learning a program is just the beginning. Just repeat exercises, draw, create crazy characters, and do not stop. The crazier your dream is, the closer you will come to discovering amazing things. So, returning to our little friend, we will see that we now have all the eyes and all the mouths attached to the head bone. That means that we can now work on our head animation without any problems. I'm going to give him a little more rotation, to give a little more emphasis to his speech. Now we have a bone animation, a mouth animation, and another one for the eyes. If we select all these layers at the same time, we will see all the animations together in our timeline. Okay, now let's see how to work with the eyebrows and the expression lines. Here we have these two layers, but for the moment, we are going to work only with the eyebrows. So to work with the eyebrows, we will add two new bones. Let's first select Cartman's folder, and then go to frame zero. From here we are going to add the first bone. The process is the same as what we did with the previous bone, but let's repeat it to practice. Once the bone is created, we have to reduce its strength. 
then give it a name to identify it, and finally, if you wish, you can give it a color. We are going to do the same with the other eyebrow. Just create a new bone, reduce its strength and give it a name and a color. I like to use colors because they are more visible, mainly when we work with very complex characters or backgrounds. Okay, once we have our bones ready, we just have to attach them to the eyebrows, just as we did before. First, we select the bone, then select the eyebrow layer, and now we can select the vectors. Once we have both objects selected, we can join them with the bind points tool. Now let's repeat the same process to join the other eyebrow with the other bone. Take your time, don't rush, and always verify that you are selecting all the vertices. Okay, now let's do a test. Let's select Cartman's folder to see the bones menu on our left and try to move both eyebrows. They are now ready to be animated. Just one detail, if you want to rotate the bone, just press the Alt key and then rotate it. But look at this. As you can see, we have our animation done, but the eyebrows are separated. So how can we attach the eyebrows to the head if they are already attached to their own bones? In a case like this, we will simply join one bone to another. To do this, we first have to go to frame zero. Select the bone of one of the eyebrows and with the tool Reparent Bone or letter P, we will select the bone of the head. We now have the eyebrow attached to the head bone. Let's repeat the process with the other one. This is similar to when we create a parent bone to control the entire character to make it walk. In this case, we have the head bone that controls the eyebrows and other bones that we could add to it. Now as you can see, both eyebrows were attached to the parent bone of the head and now both are part of the animation. This process will allow us to add other elements such as glasses, other types of hats, a helmet, and whatever you want. Okay, now let's see how we can create a small animation with the eyebrows. In this case, to move the eyebrows, we are not going to use the Manipulate Bones tool. We can move them using the Transform tool or letter T. Now we can go to frame 19 in the timeline and then generate new keyframes for the eyebrows simply by clicking on each bone. Then in frame 24, we are going to generate a small rotation in both eyebrows. Now that you know how to work with bones and with the bind points tool, you will be able to add all kinds of objects to our character. The process is always the same. Finally, we are going to see something that is going to be very useful when we are adding expressions to our characters. And this is giving the layers the option of being visible or not. I left the eyebrows and expression line layers separate only for this reason. First, let's see a preview of our character. These expression lines, like many others that we could add, should not be constantly active. And that is why Moho gives us the opportunity to make them visible or not. Let's see how it works. First, let's make sure that the layer we will work with is visible. In our case, the eyes lines layer. Then just go to frame 1 in the timeline and then press double click over our layer to open the menu. The only thing we need to do is to deactivate the visible option. As you can see, a keyframe has been created, and that indicates us that the layer is hidden. Now we just have to look for when we want the layer to become active. In my case, I'm going to go to frame 18 just when Cartman opens his eyes. Just double click on the layer and now we can activate the visible option again. This red space tells us that during these frames, this layer will be hidden. Like any other keyframe, we can move them at any time so that it fits with our animation. In my case, I am going to adjust these frames to be active only from frame 17 to frame 27. But what happens if you want to hide other parts like the eyebrows? To do so, you can simply repeat the same process. If you look closely at the South Park characters, they don't have their eyebrows active all the time. These are only activated to emphasize certain expressions of the characters. In my case, I'm simply going to leave them active until the end. 
Remember that if you want to see the animations you added to your different layers, you just have to select them. The more layers you select, the more animations you will see in your timeline. To create an animation like the one we saw at the beginning of the video, you will only have to use the tools we saw today. In my case, I just added two extra bones, one to control the eyes, and another for the body. If you wish, you can also create layers to animate the hands, and you can also create a bone to control the entire body to make it walk. Here we can see how the animation I created is composed. It seems complicated, but as you saw, it's just a matter of practice. Today we have created a very complete animation simply with two bones and a few layers. The switch layers technique is very useful, and if we combine that with bones animation, you will be able to create really great animations. For those who are new to my channel, welcome. And thank you for your interest in art, drawing and digital animation. And for those who are already part of this family, thank you so much for your support. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Also, if you want, you can send a super thanks to help me with the channel. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. There's more coming up, but now it's time to practice. So I will see you next time.